It's just another bad day, dark feelings are back Assault in your heart with a panic attack There ain't no shame in feeling depressed Hello, this is John Richardson and you're listening to the Andy's Man Club podcast Okay, hello to you. Welcome to another episode of the Andy's Man Club podcast, Man Chat. Uh, Not too sure what episode we're on here, to be honest with you, so I'll have to just tag that on the beginning or the end. But uh, this morning I am joined by two facilitators, one who you're already familiar with, um, who took part in the podcast a few weeks ago with with Mark Hudson. We've got Neil from Huddersfield, and we've also got Greg from up north of the border. So we'll come on to you then, Greg. Um... Do you want to introduce yourself, let us know the club that you're from um, and how you got involved with AMC, really? Hey, I'm Greg Munro uh, from St Andrews, uh, which had just started the turn of the year. Uh, I was, I'd actually started emailing different companies myself, looking to uh, to help, really. Uh, I'd done the uh, November before and just kind of the start of the year, thought I wanted to do something. And so contacted you guys, contacted... Um, a couple of different uh, companies. A lot of them were smaller. There was one in Glasgow that wasn't really uh, wanting to do anything. They were a bit too wee and, and were just uh, working out at Glasgow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just at the same time, it started up in St Andrews. And then, kind of incidentally, and or, or probably not incidentally, really, pushing me on further was uh, two friends uh, taking their own lives in, in the space of a month or so, in, uh, you know, here and about. So just trying to help, really. Uh, Went along thinking I was only trying to help and did a couple of meetings and, and found out they helped me as well. So, you know, this whole thing really works. And then and, and being in with you guys, the positivity is really good. I started running because of you guys. There's there's just so much good happening. Brilliant. It's a familiar tale, isn't it, Neil? I think we hear quite a lot of fellas that say, I've come along to help others and the, the sort of uh, feeling they get from being in a session themselves uh, is something that we get quite a lot in it. It's, it's a really common one. Uh, we, we've got a couple of guys who attend Huddersfield who originally came through the door to support somebody else to get them through the door. And I'm left to just carry on coming in and found out that once the ball starts going round and they get hold of that ball, there's so much power in that sponge ball. It's unbelievable. And it gives you this this sort of belief that you can just sit there and talk about anything. And the, the guy just they just carry on talking and talking and talking. It's done a world of good. Which they didn't even know we were going to do. So that's uh, the that power of AMC. That phone ball. <laughs> that one exactly there. <laughs> never, never far away from it. Um, no. Well, obviously, in the uh, in the few months that you've been with AMC, then Greg, how's it been going at St Andrews? They only managed about what four or five live meetings, and they were starting to to work really well. The first one, the guys from. Uh, um, Perth came down and a couple of guys from Dunfermline came along just to boost the numbers so the busiest one was the first one maybe had 14 or so and then since then there was 4 or 5 at St Andrews uh, I'm, I'm sure the, the, the guys might come back but the one or two guys I thought really uh, enjoyed it or, or took the most out of it anyway uh, didn't come back there was, there was one guy who, who seemed in, in quite a lot of bother uh, and at the break a lot of guys then went and had a word to him and uh, I never saw him again uh, but then we did have regulars by the time it was finishing. There was maybe um, what four or five regulars who came every time. And then the first time I was going to facilitate a live meeting was the first one that we had to cancel because of the, the lockdown. Uh, and since this has started, we struggled a wee bit for numbers. We're going online. I had four the first time, but that was with two facilitators. And then the, the next time, um, we only had three. And no one appeared at all till the last one. So I don't know if the, the technology is putting people off or, or just what's being kind of used putting people off. I, I'm not so sure. I think it's one of those things. I think the technology is, is fantastic and the uh, the feedback that we've had from those that have been on here and tried it. And obviously we'll, uh, we'll show the guys in a little while how we work. For those of you that have been involved in the Andy's Man Club or heard the Andy's Man Club podcast before, we always run through a bit of a session um, to allow us to show you how it works. But the feedback that we've had has been... You know, those that have tried it, love it. Um, and, you know, for some people, technology isn't the way forward. And we know this doesn't replicate the uh, the sort of face-to-face that we get. Um, but that said, it is very, very, very close to. Um, just with you there touching on, you know, the fact that you'd, you'd think that you'd get a couple of... Um, couple of the guys back through the door. I used to find that, obviously, I used to facilitate the club in Oldham. 
and you know you'd think to yourself, oh yeah, we really got through to that guy last, last night, and then you won't see them again for another month. For some guys, that's how it is. You know, they go away and they go, right? Do you know what? I feel fantastic again now. You know, I feel like I've I've shared a load off my chest, and then they'll come back down when they feel the need to. Um, and again, like you say, you do end up with the uh, with a couple of regulars as well. I know it's the same for you in Huddersfield as well, isn't it, Neil? That, that's the that's the beauty of how it works. The fact that the guys know that every Monday. Obviously, the current the current state of the country is in is a bit different, but up until then, every Monday the guys know that there's somewhere that they can go. They don't have to go. There's no sort of signing. They're not going to get booted out if they don't come, and you know they can just come and, and drop in whenever they like, really. And they know the format of it. They feel it's a safe environment to be able to do that. The welcome back whenever they want to come. If they want three weeks in between, three months in between, we had some people go and disappear for a year, and then realise that. Yeah, I need to come back, and that's what they do. They just come back again and use it, and it's. Uh, I think that's the power of it, really. That, that, that's, you know, there's that that proves how and why it works, because it's not like I say, it's not something that's. Um, although, if you talk to a lot of the guys, I know talking to one of the facilitators of this field the other day, it's it's. In fact, one of our members said it on the live video last week. For him, Monday nights are non-negotiable. And that, that that sort of summed it up brilliantly, and that's that's probably how I see it, because I I probably don't need it as as much as I used to do when I first started coming. But Monday nights are a non-negotiable, and you find my missus built up the backside on a Monday night. If I'm having one of those, where oh, I think I'll stop at home tonight. I, can't, I don't want it tonight. It should be you're out, you're going. So it's and I think that shows a positive effect. And even though Greg, you're saying that you've only had four or five through the door. Those four or five through the door, that positivity giving those guys spreads to their family, their friends, their acquaintances. So it's not just that five that you're having the effect on at the time. It's so wide reaching from that five. It's unbelievable. Definitely, definitely. You touched as well, Greg, on the uh, the running challenge as well. The it's okay to run challenge that's happening at this moment in time. I know you've been really vocal in the groups and you found that really supportive. Aren't you? Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, your, your story there? Because you, yeah. Chatting before we came on, you said you'd not run in 20 years, did you? Yeah, yeah. 20 years ago, I played football back then and twisted my knee quite badly and never really dared to go again. I'd had quite an active job the whole time, my chef, and so I'd always been, you know, moving stuff about, uh, walking around a lot, pretty heavy work, but, uh, you know, just not run. And so when the AMC thing came up, uh, I did, what, maybe 2K or so the first couple of times. Uh, walking some of it, uh, now up to 5k, uh, running at least half of that, and, and you know, walking fast for the rest. Uh, twisting my knee a little bit there, what, two days ago, but um, so I'd one day walking, and then today I, I pushed on and I've been uh, jogging instead. And really That's feeling the, the benefits of that, of not quite down a waist size, but things feel a little uh, uh, less, less tight. And yeah, it's pretty good. I just see why you guys do it. And I always kind of sat at home and, you know, looked at the joggers out the window with a, a you know, wry smile and, and thought I knew better. And, and now I've tried it out and see why you do it. It works. Yeah, it's pretty good. Brilliant. Yeah, it's like you say as well. I think that's a, a really strong mindset as well that you had there that, you know, you didn't let, the, the one sort of setback that you'd had step in your way. You just said, well, it might slow me down a little bit, but it's not going to stop me. And I think that's a great metaphor for what AMC does, that, you know, we know there are going to still be bumps in the road. We know there are still going to be challenges to overcome. Take them at your own pace and you can do it. And, you know, that running challenge, I think there's, there's a proper little community here developed in there, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, hi. hi. And, and, and the same supportive things going on. You know, guys asking about uh, what shoes to wear. Guys asking about, uh, you know, should I have a day off? Uh, and then various guys chipping in with, with various. I mean, you know, I've not run for long, but I got information off another guy about what shoes I should be on. Uh, someone else chipped in with, with, with the, you know, how how long you should rest. So it's you know similar to the to the clubs. You know, none of us are professionals. None of us give uh, professional advice. Just uh, just mates chatting about, uh, you know, giving advice as they can. Brilliant. A little bit of a link we discussed there as well with yourself, Neil. I know that you used to work in kitchens as well, didn't you? Yeah, uh, 25 years as a chef. So that were, uh, yeah, to listen to your knack your knees and stuff by doing that job, you're on your feet all the time. I can I can really relate to that. That's where sort of a lot of my problems physically started from from that job and combining that with football. So it's uh, there's, there's quite a few of us in amongst the uh, the AMC 
facilities that have spent a lot of time working in kitchens. But yeah, it's uh, obviously I've not joined that running thing because I can barely walk, never mind run. Um, but just seeing the lads, the positivity that's spread between everybody on that, that's that again just sums up what AMC is about, doesn't it? It's, it's just proper peer to peer support. And it's, you know, there's always somebody there at the end of a, a WhatsApp message or a text message or a phone call or a video link to, to obviously add a few things out and, and get some real, real backup that's, especially in the current times, really appreciated. Just to touch back on that sort of kitchen environment you've talked about, Neil, you sort of said that a lot of your issues stem from there. I mean, I have got quite limited experience of working in a kitchen. I was a wash up for a, a number of years and, you know, it, it's quite a, a dog eat dog, quite macho. You know, there's a lot of stigmas invi- involved in that sort of industry, isn't there? And I think it's quite, a, a, um, like you say, somewhere where, these things can happen and people will push it away and try and hide it and things like that. Would you agree? It is It is a very sort of, especially when I'm starting doing it, going back, say this out loud, 30 years when I first started. That's quite scary. You know, I don't feel that old. Um, body feels older. But it's um, going back then, it was very much a sort of a, a macho environment and you'd go on the bravado around the kitchen. Don't get me wrong. When I first started, it's it's a lifestyle more than a job. There's sort of the a drink, a big drinking culture and partying culture around it. So you go to work all day, do 12, 13, 14, 15 hours, then go sit, then go home, a couple of hours, kit back at it. And you never thought of it, to be honest. But when you look back now, knowing what I know, there were definitely things at the time that had probably trigger certain people now. And you can see how mental health can be affected. And it's just brilliant now that people are very open about it. And we have got this kind of platform with Andy's Man Club and other things to to get things off his chest. And when, I, when I've talked to AMCs before, the power of the ball, like, like I spoke about earlier, you get hold of that and you actually don't realise some of the stuff. You don't actually go with the plan of what you're going to talk about, I don't think. And then you just end up talking about stuff. And the stuff that's come out from my past that I never thought I'd talk about, a bit mind-blowing, to be honest. Mm. What do you think about that that link with sort of the hospitality world, Greg? Because like Neil says, it's, uh, you know, there is that culture around it and there is that sort of, you know, nose to the grind and you, you're grafting hard and all the rest of it. But there is those, like I say, culture around it, isn't there? One of the first uh, lessons I learned, and, and this was the, the uh, chef sitting uh on a on a chess table at the college, and he says, "What do you you guys can survive on is uh, whole milk and Guinness. Uh, you don't need any food because you get enough nutrients on whole milk and Guinness. Enough to be whole milk and to be uh, uh, the what was in Guinness as well. So that was you drink out Guinness all night and whole milk all day in the kitchen, and you could survive. And that was you know it was obviously tongue in cheek, but that was young guys going along, being you know uh, brought into this industry by this guy who was." Uh, you know, from the off part of your training was how to drink, you know, how to live that lifestyle. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely toxic. There's, there's a lot of guys uh, who've been in a lot of pain in, in, in the kitchens and, and just gone, you know, just put their head down. The last guy the, the, the last guy who really made me do all this was a chef. The, the last guy to take his own life was a chef. Uh, the guy just the other side of January there and... Um, he was one of these guys, just, just got his head down, just got on, didn't talk very much. He used to really like animals. He used to, I used to drive him, he didn't. I used to drive him to work. And uh, he used to look out, and the soft side of him was seeing animals in the in the fields. But it was about the only soft thing about him, and everything else was, uh, you know, getting on and getting getting the job done. And, you know, he probably could have talked, really. I don't, I don't, that's how these things go, though. You don't know the guys who, uh, who you really need to talk to until it's too late sometimes, you know. Definitely. Well, no, like I said, I thought that was a really interesting link, and what you know, that was a, yeah. a talking point that we didn't really expect to come across. But no, cheers. Yeah. Um, right, I think we'll uh, we'll start to move on and start to get involved in our AMC session, if that's all right with you two gents. Um, yeah, I, I, I sort of facilitate it, and there's normally a guest, or the, there has been guests in the past who don't know much about AMC, but obviously I'm passing on to two facilitators here, so you know, I'm, I'm hoping this will. Um, this will work. It's like I said, uncharted territory for, for me even, you know, passing through to two facilitators. But we'll start with how's your week been? Um, my week has been 
on the whole, massively positive. Um, you know, managing to crack on throughout this whole issue of, you know, coronavirus and whatever it might be with, um, you know, looking after what's inside these four walls. Devastated by the news today, obviously, that I've heard that Norman Hunter, uh, the Leeds United legend, has, has unfortunately lost his battle with COVID-19. That's, you know, as a huge Leeds United fan, that's something difficult for me to uh, to deal with. But, you know, unfortunately, that you know, that, that that's the circumstance that we're in at this moment in time. And uh, like I say, other than that, massively positive week. Uh, what about yourself, Neil? I'll be honest, it's been a very sort of up and down week on the back of the previous week being horrible. Um, this one's sort of been getting coming to terms with the previous week. Obviously, you know the circumstances behind that. And we had a, we had a bit of a chat this week that did make world of good. And that just again shows the backing you get from AMC that I spent half an hour on the phone with you. And even though you don't actually need to talk about that much, just knowing that you've got that place to go to come and talk. So, yeah, it's been a, a mixed week, but coming out positive at the end of it. Good, good. What about yourself, Greg? How's your week been, mate? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, the the running's been the, the main kind of backbone of what I've been doing. You find yourself just sitting watching telly, uh, checking the phone a hundred times a day. Uh, and and the, the running's actually given me something to look forward to and something to do. The, the positive thing, the, the, the football in Scotland's been cancelled now. Uh, and that was just... Uh, Decided on uh, Wednesday there. Uh, the way it turned out, uh, I'm a Dundee United supporter, and it turns out it was uh, Dundee, the City Rivals, had the casting vote as to whether they finished the week, and finishing the week meant Dundee United winning. So Dundee United's rivals uh, gave them a week, really, midweek there. Not quite sure what's going to go on with the football. I, I know, you know, in these days it's not a, not a huge thing, but, um, you know, it's one of those things that kind of keeps you ticking over there again. And so just to the news was quite nice. Good, good. Uh, sound for that. Nice one. Cheers, fellas. Um, moving on to question number two. What's been one positive from your week? Um, I'm going to go with, you know, t- I was going to touch on this, Neil, that you just mentioned there that obviously myself and you had a chat this week. On Tuesday, I normally do... Um, a check-in with all the lads from all the clubs, just send a message out, just say, how was your club last night? And this week I decided that I'm going to change it up. I'm going to sort of, you know, I know you lads that if you had an issue with the club, you'd have let me know on Monday night probably. So I just sent a message out to everybody saying, how are you? You know, check in, see how you are. You know where we are. Let Make sure your lads know. And the response that I've had to that has been great. I've spoken to probably eight, nine, ten facilitators and trustees this last week. Just having an ear and just, you know, having that, it's been good for me as much as it's been there for them. Obviously, I've, I've offered that out to them um, as to, to offer to be in here, but it's, it's been beneficial for me. So that's been a positive for my week. Um, what about yourself, Neil? Very, very much the conversation I had with you, to be honest. Um, I sort of stayed away from facilitating Monday night, which I wouldn't normally do because I absolutely love it. Just got everybody else set up and, and sat back and just monitored the room, if you like. Um, and then getting that message through from you, that sort of opened the door for me to use question three a day late. Um, so that's what I did. And on the back of that, to be honest, rest of the week, I felt really good. So it's, uh, you know, just a, just a simple message like that just shows you that you, you've got somewhere to go. And if you use it properly, it can turn out into a massive positive and that's how it's worked for me. Fantastic. Cheers. And I've just, and I've just made some blinding flapjack as well. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, one positive from your week? Um, doing a bit of jogging today, actually. Um, started the, the week, uh, ended the, the last week, actually, sorry, uh, with my times getting better when I was out on the run. Uh, thinking I was getting there, I got myself a new pair of shoes. Uh, starting to think I was a real runner, and then I don't know what happened two or three days ago, and, and something just went. It didn't happen at the time. It wasn't until I was sitting about later. Just a tightness in my knee. Uh, and so I walked the next day after it, tried to run and, and didn't really happen. And then I, I jogged instead today. So it looked like uh, kind of rocky when he was running in the in the snow. I wasn't going very fast and, and making a bit of a funny body shape as I was doing it. But, you know, I got jogging and, and, you know, things are back on. So, you know, making the best out of a bad situation, I suppose. No, so mate, it's not about what you look like, is it? It's, you know, getting it through and doing it for your reasons. So cracking that, mate. 
Absolutely, yeah, brilliant. Uh, question number three, is there anything that you need to get off your chest? I'm in a fortunate position at this moment in time. I've not got anything to get off my chest, so I'll pass that through to you, Mr. Neil Wayne. T to be honest, um, no, because I, I did it all on Tuesday. So, like I said, the rest of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I've I've been really good. So, yeah, it's uh, n nice to have a week where I've not, to be fair. So, yeah, I'll pass that straight on to you, Greg. I'm good. I'm not bad at all either, really. Yeah, pretty good. Not really doing uh, enough to, to get angry about anything. The, the various uh, um, stuff happened on telly, but uh, no, I'm all good. Brilliant. That, that's a real positive as well. That's a great situation to be in because I'm sure we've all had round threes at some point in the uh, in the last few years or last few weeks. Obviously, we saw Greg where that's been a big round for us. Um, and to be in this position now where we don't necessarily have to have anything to gripe about or to get off our chest is a massive situation to be in. So cheers for that, fellas. <laughs> right, bear with me. I've got to pull my phone out to find a, a question for. So we will go with... Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll give you a little insight into Mondays. We'll move on to Mondays. Question four. If you were going on a road trip with three people, who would you take and why? So three people you'd take on a road trip and why? I'd have to go on two road trips. Family would be one, and then there'd be another one where it'd be, you know, more well-known people and things like that. So my family, that's my road trip over there. They go without saying. Um so on my road trip, I'd like to take. Um, I've said this before, but Gordon Strachan, the last man to win the first division title for Leeds United, uh, and he's a proper little character. You know, if any of you have any read his interviews, he was once a manager, and somebody turned around to him and said, "In which areas do you feel you were outplayed today?" And he said, "Mainly that big green one out there." Um, he's full of like little one-liners and, and crack and stuff like that. So I'd like to take him. I'd like to take. Uh, do you know what? It's a tough one. This a tough one. I'd need some entertainment on the way, so I'd like to take Johnny Marr. Um, he's a ridiculous guitarist, and you know he's written some absolute classics. Um, and you know I'd like to take him along as long as he brought his guitar with him. And who else would I like to take? Um, I'm looking around my man cave now because I'll get a little bit of inspiration of who I could take. And um, number three, doo -doo -doo -doo. do you know what? I take Steve Coogan. I've just looked up here and seen an Alan Partridge book. <laughs> um, I take Steve Coogan um, mainly just so that I can blast Partridge quotes at him for the full length of the journey. Um, so that's the, the three men I'd take with me. What about yourself, Neil? I'd have to do two trips. Uh, the first one would be me, me two uh, best mates, Ben and Danny, because that would mean I'm back going in a way there with football and having a laugh and having a crack with them. And that's uh, they're, they're the two I spoke to you about earlier, actually. We're going to have us curry nights. Brilliant. So, Brilliant. yeah, the, the fact I'm, I'm, I don't think you're really, we take stuff for granted, don't we? And I, I don't think I've realised how much I've missed that until I can't do it. So, yeah, they're definitely on the first one. And the other one I'd do. Um, an Irish singer-songwriter called uh, Maverick Sabre does some cracking tunes, um, some great acoustic stuff, seen him live. Uh, so I'd take him for entertainment. Different entertainment, I'd have Mickey Flanagan, because the man just absolutely creases me. So that would be just a, a laugh a minute from start to finish. And then taking it back to a bit of sport, I'd probably take Gaza. Nice. I, think he could tell us, I think he could tell us a tale or two. Well, what, so, yeah, that, that'd be mine. Brilliant. That were, that were a nice day. Um, Absolutely. I feel a bit guilty now moving on from one of the greatest English footballers to a Scotsman. Um, so, Greg, uh, who would be the three <laughs> people you'd take on tomorrow? Um, yeah, like I said, there'd probably be a, a family uh, road trip. Uh, I'd also quite like to kind of wee football road trip with the boys. Um, you can get uh, really nice journeys around Scotland uh, for for the football, but for a for a kind of fantasy road trip, um, Shane Meadows is a, a filmmaker. Out of, he talks at her. Yeah. Uh, made amazing stuff. I follow his stuff for ages, and and his um, the director's commentaries he does are, are, are pretty bang on. 
He did This Is England, didn't he? In the, this uh, Is he, England, uh, yeah. He did the Stone Roses film as well when they reformed yeah. it. Even going back, 24-7 was a black and white thing he made. And uh, uh, Bob Hoskins was a, a kind of character actor in it. So if you can check his early stuff, you like that. 24-7 yeah. was just the odd one. It's it kind of you know simple what we do you know just lots of guys and and you know getting each other going working one little thing out sometimes coming out of bad situations and and ending up better you know not always great just better you know fairly relatable stuff he always did uh, probably keeping on that way Gavin Clark was a guy who made music with with Shane Meadows the whole time just a, a, a virtuoso guitar player who who never. Um, uh, really um, was seen by enough people he, he didn't appreciate himself enough uh, and ended up taking his own life eventually with, with drugs and things but the music this guy put out was just jaw-dropping pretty pretty heartbreaking a lot of stuff but he, him and the, uh, the back there with guitar would be great and then probably um, might even go away for football Hulk Hogan I'm a big wrestling fan It'd be a big car if it Hulk Hogan in the back, but I'm sure he'd have good stories <laughs> from some of the days uh, on the road. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, and coming on to that, uh, question number five, the quick fire one this week. Um, which three albums would you take with you? Uh, <sighs> first two for me, completely roll off the tongue. First one would have to be definitely maybe by Oasis. Second one would have to be Stone Roses, Stone Roses. And then the third one could be intermittent, but one that I've found just the last couple of weeks that was an old favourite uh, is one called The Last Broadcast by Doves. Um, an album that I absolutely hammered when I was about 19, 20, 21. Um, and then it just goes to back its shelf and I've, I've found myself listening to that again the last couple of weeks. It's been class. So those have been the three albums I'd take with me. Wait, Doves, I just... I put them on one of my top tens for singles for the day. Black and white sound. So it's uh, yeah, yeah. one of the best songs yeah. anyone will ever listen to that. I went to see Noel Gallagher about five, six years ago and the two brothers supported him. Um, and yeah. they black and white sound, last song at the club. I think music-wise, to pick, to pick three is really, really difficult. Um, I'd probably go Purple Rain by Prince. Class. Just because he is simply the best artist I've ever seen live, just ridiculous, um, absolute genius with everything. So yeah, that that'd be one of them. Um, Stone Rose is best of, just because class. It's absolute class, um, and I'd probably go something. I'm just having a flick through here because. <laughs> Just too many, far too many. <sighs> yeah, Lonely Are the Brave, which is an album by Maverick Sabre. And he's, uh, yeah, it's just proper stuff. So well, yeah, if he's with you, you can get him to sing it for you. You what? If he's with you, you could get him to sing it for you. They could do it all live, couldn't they? All yeah. acoustic in the car, happy days. Um, just touching on that thing with Prince there, did you ever hear that interview that Jimmy Page did where somebody turned around to him and said, what does it feel like to be the greatest guitar player in the world? He says, I don't know, you best go and ask Prince. Yeah. Phenomenal. And it's, honestly, I saw him live six times, um, and he, he was just, just uh, unreal, just unreal. I'm just you got a genius in front of you, haven't you? It's uh, you just sit back and watch and enjoy. So yeah, it's a, a sad loss that one, but yeah, it'd be my top three easy. Class. What about yourself, Greg? Um, original Pirate Material was uh, the Streets' first yeah. album. I, I thought I'd discovered them. I was I was kind of shouting about, and it turns out they told me all about it before, and then I was uh, you know a wee bit behind the curve, but yeah, as an album that tells a story, you know, there's no more albums don't mean so much anymore. People just listen to music now, and and you know, fashion's mixed up, or you listen to podcasts, or as, as an album that tells a story, it's one of my favourite uh, you know full albums. Mm -hmm. um, Electric Ladyland uh, was one of my dads that I managed to steal. And again, thought I'd, you know, thought I'd find this guy who, uh, who no one else had heard of from back in the days, and and turned out everyone knows the album and knows the artist, and I was laughed at again. And um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of Gavin Clark. The the, the beautiful skeletons was a, a um, best of album, which maybe is cheating in this kind of a round, but uh, 
it was uh, just kind of from from all the way through his career, and uh, you know some of the the nicest versions of a lot of the music I've already knew. Really, just be how people listen to music. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's um there's something happening on Twitter every single night at the moment that are just listening parties, and they've got the people that made these albums. I think it's Tim Burgess from the Charlatans that started it, but they've just they put the record on, and then the people that made it share their memories as you listen to it. So literally, you just put the whole album on, and then follow them. You know, sort of sharing their memories on Twitter. I, I joined in with a couple of those and found them to be class. Yeah, I think I might have to give that a well. Sounds well up my street. So yeah, they've been really good. Um, so that was our question five. So I, I did adapt that one a little bit. We started to talk a little bit about music on question four. So I thought we'll have a music round instead on question five. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, because it was supposed to be what three items would you take with you? But I just thought we started talking about music. We might as well keep it with music. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's what we do in it. We roll with the punches, we adapt. Um, the last one that we'll always touch on again as part of the podcast, we've always said, what's the last thing that made you laugh out loud? It was a, a question we had in group a couple of weeks ago, but it's something that we've continued in the podcast and it's something that we uh, always sign off with. So last thing that made me laugh out loud was, I don't know if anybody's seen it, but the podcast that we made on, well, we recorded it Tuesday night, I think it came out Wednesday. Um where you'll all have noticed that I've had a shave uh, just because I'm getting absolute <laughs> ripped out of me for me shit porno tash. Um, it's one of those things, while we've been on lockdown, there's no point in shaving, so I just let it go from you know week to week and I end up growing like this little gangster pencil moustache um, that just looks like I'm sat in a shadow somewhere. So... The lads taking absolute bits out of me for that was a great laugh on uh, on Tuesday night. So that was the last thing that made me laugh out loud. Neil? Probably just sat watching. We've got an, got an house rabbit called Colin. And just watching him on a night is absolutely bonkers. He just legs it about. He jumps up on the set. He jumps off the other side. Chucks himself over. He's, he's mental. You can just sit and watch him for hours. He just, yeah. Proper makes me howl every day at some point. Class. Yes. Greg? Yeah, it's probably pet based as well. The dog's sitting here. She's sleeping. <laughs> uh, but um, when she rolls on her back, and uh, I'm not sure what they do, it just looks like the best thing you've ever seen in the world is when a dog rolls on its back and snorts and bites, and, and I don't know what yeah. they're doing. But it just looks, you know, I wish I could get to that yeah. level by rolling on a carpet. <laughs> <laughs> give it a whirl, yeah. Give it a whirl. That's maybe what you need to do. Maybe you just need to try it. Yeah. Belting. Right then, fellas. Well, thank you for that. I think that's been a great chat. Um, another AMC podcast in the bag. Um, thanks for joining us. Obviously, north of the border, Greg. And you know, hopefully, before too long, once all this is over, I'll be up there. Um, come and see you guys. We'll do a bit of a push for you up in St Andrews and uh, and get a bit of a uh, bit more. People out and about knowing about it, so look for. I, I can I, I can sense a road trip there, Mister Greenway. We joined on our way to Hartlepool. We did the same for Hartlepool and went up there, and you know, again we had we had a road trip then, didn't we? And we did. The it. items that we had were three double deckers, I think, and not buses. <laughs> that yeah, that kind of double. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, like I said, take care, Greg. You know where we are. Stay in touch, and you know how we sign off, gents. With and it's okay to talk. It's okay to talk. It's okay to talk. Cheers, fellas. Bad day, dark feelings are back. Assaulting your heart with a panic attack. There ain't no shame in feeling depression. You need to sit down and talk, son. Get it off your chest. It's just another bad day, dark feelings are back. Assaulting your heart with a panic attack. There ain't no shame in feeling depression. You need to sit down and talk, son. Get it off your chest.